Are you planning on buying a ute for your family? Maybe you've got double use for it, like you need it for work to transport things around and you're wondering how good of a family car it can make. We've got two utes here, the Mazda BT50 and the Isuzu D-Max, and I'm going to talk you through which is the best buy for your family. I've already tested both of these utes separately before, and we're putting them together here to give you a really good idea of how they compare and what they're like to live with. The Mazda is the middle of the range BT50 XTR, which costs around 57 grand. The Isuzu is the top of the range X-Terrain and costs almost 64 grand before on-road costs. So the D-Max is a lot more expensive than the BT50. But what do you get for your moolah? Let's get into it. Utes are large, tough looking beasts. Will you find one you like the look of more than the other? Here's how the BT50 and D-Max compare. D-Max first. It looks large and square, like a ute. And aesthetically, while it's not particularly appealing to me personally, I don't think it's meant to. It's meant to look tough. Like it could take you on outside the pub if it needed to, or take you across a river, or carry you up a gravelly mountain. That's the vibe I'm getting here. The inside looks decent enough. There are leather accented seats, which feel comfortable and they look good. You get a leather steering wheel. You even get uh, a pebbled dash up here with some exposed stitching. And look, while it's by no means luxe, it still feels good to drive in. And plus it looks very easy to clean when you come back in from your muddy camping trip, which you'll no doubt take in this ute. You'll get a nine inch multimedia display with sat nav. It's got corded Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay, both of which are pretty great for this category. You'll also get an eight speaker sound system. It's not amazing, but it's good. For storage in the cabin, you will get two cup holders in the front, a nice deep tray here that I used for keys and a phone this week. You also get a little tray on top, but it's quite flat. You might want to pop an iPad in there. Plus you'll get a center storage bin. It's a decent size and bottle holders in the doors. And how does the Mazda U stack up design wise? I got the most comments from women this week. How's your truck going? What are you driving? How is it to drive? So there was a little bit of interest, but mostly it was, what are you doing in a ute? And that's probably down to the fact that it looks like a bit of a small truck. But still, the Mazda BT-50 doesn't look as truck-like as other utes. It's still got the signature Mazda grille, and it basically looks like an overblown Mazda. This is the middle of the range and there aren't a lot of super fancy features, but it's definitely a step up from the bottom of the range and it looks more like a car than, you know, say a van would. It's designed with little fanfare and it's not really about what it looks like, it's more about what the car can do. So for me, sitting in here is about the height off the road and there's something really confidence building and being so high off the road while you're driving. There are fabric seats that feel good on the body and they are ultra comfortable. It's like you get in here and you just, it's almost like an oh, kind of feeling. It's so comfortable up here. Plus it's got a leather steering wheel. There's not much else going on in terms of style. If you're after a bit more luxury, you can go for the GT, which is the top of the range. And that adds leather seats that are also heated. There's a nine inch multimedia screen that has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It's exactly the kind of tech that you want. Yes, even in your ute because it integrates seamlessly with your phone and basically works like a large version of your phone with all of your apps so you can navigate and listen to music or podcasts. It is quite low res, so it's not as snazzy as one that you'd get in an SUV, for example, but for a ute, it's good. There are two cup holders in the front that are very large and very deep. Not exactly practical for those who don't want a giant Starbucks cup coffee. I have a tiny coffee and I couldn't fit it in here this week because I was afraid I would lose it down there. Um, it does have a really nice deep spot for keys and a phone, plus a good size center storage bin and bottle holders in each door. 
Okay, so as far as design goes, you'll get the middle of the range BT50 for approximately the same price as the top of the range D-Max. But in the D-Max, there are leather accented seats, which is a big selling point for a lot of people. The BT50 has a more stylish exterior though. And all round, if the leather seats are your thing, you can go to the top of the range to get them. So the BT50 wins on design. Okay, so how do the two compare for interior and cargo space? You're about to find out. The space in here is massive. It's really high off the ground, so you're already feeling tall. And there is loads of leg and headroom, even for taller people. This is a bigger person's car. Rear passengers also have plenty of space and my kids happily used the side step to climb up and in. There is loads of leg and headroom back here as well. I can fit easily back here. I'm 161 centimeters or five foot three. There's enough space between my knees and the seat in front that taller adults, other teenagers won't have an issue back here. You can easily fit three children in the back seat, but the D-Max only comes with two top tether points and two isofix points, so you can't actually fit three kids' car seats back here. Adults will fit fine though as well. Rear passengers get two cup holders in the center armrest, plus their own directional air vents, which my kids always appreciate in summer. Now, instead of a boot, you've got a giant tray, which is great if you're going away camping for the weekend, you need to carry loads of things for the family with you, or if you've got your own business and you need to make deliveries all the time, or of course, if you're a tradie and you're carrying tools around. If you're a working mum, however, and you're just doing the school run and going to work, a tray is not as convenient as a boot. Yes, it's bigger, but it is so enormous that things are going to slide around. Groceries, school bags, the pram, suitcases. It's all going to need to be tied down before you get into the car to drive away, which is just a little bit of extra work every time you put something in the boot. Is that going to get annoying? I think it would, personally. Uh, but how annoying it is, is up to you and your lifestyle and how much you need a really big tray. Because if you're going to use it a lot, then it's worth it. The great thing about this boot, though, is the slide-on cover that opens and shuts and locks. Now, here's something you might not know. These two utes may look different, but they're actually exactly the same car under the skin. And that means they have exactly the same amount of interior space. So you still get the roominess of the D-Max inside the BT50, and it's the same situation in the back seat. If it's three people, but you only get two fixtures for kids' car seats. Now the D-Max does have the hard cover on the back tray, which doesn't come standard with the Mazda. But the Mazda has a bunch of accessories you can opt in to purchase, like the hard or soft cover for the tray from $3,115, and you can even get a whole canopy on top starting from around four grand. Plus there are a bunch of different finishes on the tray and you can opt in a rubber tray mat too. So we already know the D-Max and the BT50 actually have the same engine, suspension, and anything mechanical really. So they're going to drive pretty much the same. How does it feel to drive a ute on the school run? Let's get into the D-Max to find out. The most surprising thing I found about the D-Max is that I actually enjoy driving it. I really love being so high up off the road and I really love the power of a three litre engine. It sounds quite loud for a diesel, but you know, it comes with the territory. There's the quiet confidence you get with having a proper four wheel drive. The turning circle isn't even as large as I thought it was going to be. Nothing feels awkward and the steering is actually easy. So when you go to park, as long as you leave a big enough space, cause it is quite a large car, parking isn't too bad at all. You get a decent enough reverse parking camera. It's not super high res, but it's what you'd expect for a U. The official combined fuel figure is eight liters per 100 Ks and that's diesel. My average fuel this week was 10.4 liters per 100 Ks. And that was doing mainly city driving though, some highways thrown in. 
Clearly, the BT50 and the DMAT score the same in the driving section because, well, essentially, it's the same. <laughs> it's a very tight race we have here, folks. On to safety and once again they are on par with all of the safety features. Here's what that looks like. Safety is pretty comprehensive. There's auto emergency braking with pedestrian and cyclist detection, lane departure warning, blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert. You'll get airbags that cover driver and front passenger and there's also an extra airbag in the centre front. Plus there are side curtain airbags that go to the back row and the BT50 has got the maximum five stars in the ANCAP test when it was tested under 2020's strict criteria. So the DMAX scores a maximum of five stars from ANCAP and neither car has a third top tether point so they can both only fit two kids in car seats. We have another tie on our hands. Now, if you're wondering about warranty, here's where the two differ. In the Isuzu D-Max, you'll get a six year, 150,000 kilometer warranty with 13 months roadside assistance. And if you service your D-Max with a participating Isuzu Ute dealer, the roadside cover will be extended up to a max of seven years, which is pretty great. Servicing is required every 12 months or 15,000 Ks and a seven year capped servicing is offered. So services will cost just over $480 each year. In the BT50, Mazda offers a five year unlimited kilometer warranty and gives you five years of roadside assistance. Services are required every 12 months or 15,000 Ks and there's a cap servicing plan that averages out over the five years to be approximately $496 per service. So unless you cover really big kilometers, Isuzu wins this round just barely. <laughs> It's crunch time, who comes out on top? While they're both the same car under the skin, they do differ in terms of design and interiors, and that's where Mazda's strength really comes through. And yes, the D-Max comes with a hard tray cover that's really very necessary and so helpful for everyday driving, but you can get one in the Mazda as well if you pay a little bit extra. Being so similar, it comes down to how driving the car makes you feel and I felt better driving the BT50 around. It looks better, less like a trade is you, and for a family, I'm calling it the winner today. 